in today's lecture we are going to talk about the different transport processes and their descriptions now when we talk about transport processes we not only mean heat transfer momentum transfer or mass transfer we also are going to talk about the mechanism of these transport processes for example in some situations the convective transport process may become important in some other cases conductive and in some cases both would be important so when we talk about conductive transport process or molecular transport process in which the transport is going to be proportional to the gradient of a quantity that can be measured for example it could be velocity for momentum transfer temperature or concentration and the corresponding phenomenological equations such as newton's law of viscosity or fourier's law of conduction or fick's law of diffusion they essentially define a transport coefficient which it could be the viscosity or the thermal conductivity or the diffusion coefficient so the, these are a cluster of transport processes in which the transport is due to the presence of a gradient in a direction perpendicular to the flow so if we have a difference in temperature and uh, we in, for example in a solid then the heat transport is going to be proportional to the temperature gradient and the proportionality constant is the thermal conductivity of the fluid so there will be some situations in which the trans transport is primarily going to be governed by the molecule by the molecules without those molecules actually displaced from their average positions in some other cases it's the bulk convection bulk transport of material between point between points 1 and 2 and they will carry with them the corresponding momentum the energy or material transport from one point to the other so whenever we have transfer of material from one point to another and thereby causing some transport of mass momentum or energy that kind of processes are known as convective transport process the convective transport processes are predominantly they are, are the mode of uh, transport in liquids though in liquids the conduction is also present and these type of coupled uh, convection and conduction problems are quite important and we are also going to look at uh, the effects of trans effects of convective and conductive transport in microsystems so we would we would see in in this is uh, the transport processes their classifications and the properties the coefficients which are important in some such processes uh, the governing equations for momentum transfer heat transfer and mass transfer and the relative importance of convection and conduction as specified by some engineering parameters and similarity parameters okay. and uh, their the relative importance which would tell us that which process is going to take longer to to establish a fully developed condition in uh, when mass which for example mass and heat transfer are taking place simultaneously then uh, we would like to know which process is which process is faster Okay. Uh, for example, in 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 the case of condensation from a vapor onto a onto the surface of a onto a cold surface, we would like to know what are what it, whether it's governed by the thermal process or it's going to go it's governed by the diffusion of the vapor molecules from the bulk to the cooler surface and uh, thereby creating uh, an ideal condition for condensation. so these differences we would also like to look at uh, in in today's class furthermore we would also like to see what would be the and just one applicative example is for example if we have flow simultaneously flow and heat transfer in a slender micro channel a micro channel which is thin yet long and we would like to see what would be the governing equations for such cases and how additional forces could be incorporated into the governing equation for example how the surface forces can be play a prominent role in such cases and uh, finally we would also like to see the application engineering application of these equations for example in terms of finding out what would be the pressure difference between points 1 and 
and not in a straight pipe as we have uh, already known from our undergraduate fluid mechanics, but in a system in which we have a, there would be large number of bends, there would be internals and uh, we are going to concentrate on smaller dimension pipes in which the length is going to be large compared to the cross section and the cross section itself has too many uh, is following a tortuous path. So, the pressure drop is going to be more. So, we are going to study first start with the transport pro processes and uh, we would see how it changes. So, since it is taking some time for to load, then uh, let us talk about the relevant equations in, uh, in transport process and their descriptions. See, for example, all of us know that uh, the governing the governing process in fluid mechanics is uh, uh, if we if we go by uh, elementary transport process and their descriptions, what we see here is uh, the change of uh, any variable is described by the transport process uh, of conduction in the mobile phase. But essentially, the governing equation can be written as total flow of any parameter. It could be energy, it could be mass, or it could be the momentum is if we define a control volume consisting of 6 phases, then through all these 6 phases there can be transport of momentum for example, into the control volume and there could also be convection due to flow of fluid into the control volume and there could be some source or sink. So, let us think of what happens in, uh, in an in a system in which momentum transport is taking place. So, as a result of all the momentum which are coming to the control volume, the, the, the density, the flow density, the momentum, total momentum contained in the control volume will, will change. And how would it change? There can be 6 phases through the 6 phases we can have conduction molecular transport of momentum into the control volume and they exist because of the gradient in velocity in a direction perpendicular to the flow. So, I have a I have a x phase and a x plus and, and another phase at x plus delta x. So, the area of the x phase could be delta y times delta z. So, x phase is the area which is perpendicular to the x direction. So, I have another phase which is at x plus delta x. So, if I have flow in this, then it is easy to find out what is the total amount of momentum being added by conduction into the control volume. So, it would simply be the component velocity v x in this direction multiplied by the area which is delta y times delta z. So, v x times delta y delta z would give me the amount of fluid which is coming into this control volume uh, uh, per unit time. So, multiply that with rho and what I get is the amount of mass which is coming into this control volume per unit time. So, this mass flow rate when again multiplied by v x one more time would give me the com x momentum the x component of momentum which is entering the control volume. So, the expression for momentum coming into the control volume would simply be equal to rho times v x times del y del z and a v x again everything evaluated at x. Similarly, the momentum which is living through the x plus delta x phase would, would be all these quantities, but they are evaluated at x plus delta x. Similarly, for the y phase and for the z phase, one would be able to obtain what is, what is the y component of momentum being added to the system and the z component of momentum being added to the system. Similarly, through all these phases, due to a difference in velocity, the momentum can enter 
the x momentum can enter because of a because of the because of a, the presence of a gradient those are the conductive transport of momentum so through all these six phases due to the presence of velocity gradient and applying applying newton's law i should be able to find out what are what are the expressions of tau xy tau xz and tau xx similarly for three y components and for three z components so together we then would be able to find out all the components of the stress tensor so sum this over the boundary for the conduction and for the convection plus there would be source or sink in these source or sink it's simply going to be the the forces which are present in the system now for a momentum momentum transport situation the sources or sink that are relevant are due to surface forces and the surface forces for macroscopic systems would simply be equal to the pressure forces and the shear forces and when we talk about the body forces it could be the gravity or the electrostatic forces or some other such forces which uh, which are which are applied on the entire volume entire mass of the of the control volume so based on that i can write the source or sink components of this equation so we know what are the con conductive transport the convective transport and as a sum of all these the total flow density or the total energy content or the total amount of species inside the control volume may be different and this would give us the the to the a complete description of the flow physics in terms of either mass heat or momentum and the transfer coefficients are defined as the diffusivity d the kinematic viscosity which is mu by rho and a thermal diffusivity which is k by rho cp where k is the thermal conductivity rho is the density and cp is the heat capacity all three transport coefficients namely the diffusivity the the uh, kinematic viscosity and the thermal th and the, th uh, the thermal diffusion coefficient has have units of meter square per second now if we look into the dynamic behavior behavior of uh, viscous fluids i will see i mean this uh, i think we have covered before a, a dimensionless number or a similarity parameter named the reynolds number would appear in all the equations and the dimensionless number reynolds number is defined as a length scale the velocity the density divided by the viscosity now the importance of similarity parameters are simply that if the similarity parameter of two different fluids under two different conditions are equal then the process be it heat transfer mass transfer or momentum transfer then the process can be described by governing equations which are identical the if so if we express the dimensional the if, if we express the equations governing equations in a non dimensional form then these similarity parameters for example reynolds number would appear automatically and the moment the process conditions if the process conditions are such that for two different fluids the values of the reynolds number are the same then the governing equations describing the process would be equal so reynolds number typically tells us about the uh, is important for viscous fluids and it it tells us it it's basically uh, gives us some ratio of inertial forces and viscous forces similar to reynolds number in fluid mechanics we have uh, um, convective flow for example defined by schmidt number in in mass transfer uh, denoted by sc here which is which is defined as mu by rho d mu being the viscosity and d being the diffusion coefficient so if you if you look carefully the schmidt number is nothing but a ratio between momentum transfer and mass transfer or specifically it's the speci species transfer so uh, the values of these numbers would tell us something about which process is important is it the momentum transport process that is more important compared to the mass transfer or otherwise 
So, if we, we can also say that if Schmidt number is of the order of 1, which is which is uh, which happens for the case of gases, then the momentum transfer and the species transfer are in the same order of magnitude. So, let us say we have a flow of a gas through a pipe through uh, let us say a small slit and uh, that slit is made of a material which can sublimate. For example, it is a naphthalene, naphthalene, uh, um, cont na naphthalene slit, two plates of naphthalene which are kept close to each other and we have flow. So, there is going to be the formation of a hydrodynamic boundary layer and the formation of a mass transfer boundary layer. Now, we, we, we do not know a priori which one is going to linger for longer. That means, we, will, we, we are not sure whether it is it, it's the mass transfer which is, which is going to be the faster or the momentum transfer which is going to be more uh, which is which is going to take place at a higher rate. So, if we see the value of Schmidt number which is mu by rho d. So, if the if the value of Schmidt number is let us say about 1 then the viscous transport of momentum and the species transport are of the same order of magnitude and both these boundary layers will grow together and the fully developed condition in terms of in terms of momentum transfer and in terms of mass transfer are going to attain at at the same point or at very close to each other that means both these processes momentum transfer and species transfer will 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 take place at the same rate so, concentration profile and the velocity profile as they grow will be similar in nature. So, similarly one can we, we can also see that if Schmidt number is large, now the value of Schmidt number being large that means, the, the, the value of uh, the diffusion coefficient which is in the denominator would be small and if the value of the diffusion coefficient in is small, then it will take a longer path for the concentration gradient or the, or the concentration profile to become fully developed. That means, for large Schmidt number cases such as for liquids, the concentration gradients will develop slowly compared to the velocity gradient. So, the velocity will be hydrodynamically fully developed, but not developed not fully developed as far as the mass transfer mass transport is concerned. So, these similarity parameters the values of these similarity parameters tells us important information about the not only the nature of the process, but how fast the different components of the processes are. So, the same contribute same conclusion that we can made about mass transfer and momentum transfer can also be made for momentum transfer and heat transfer. The corresponding similarity parameter of interest in that case would be Prandtl number which is C p mu by k or in other words it is the moment it can be expressed as by the momentum diffusivity by thermal diffusivity. So, if the value of Prandtl number is large then the momentum, diff momentum diffusivity is going to be quite large compared to the thermal diffusivity and same as in Schmidt number the flow is going to be fully developed hydrodynamically, but the thermally it is yet it, is, it will still be developing. So, similar such uh, similar such uh, cases similar such analogies can be drawn between uh, between heat transfer and heat transfer and uh, uh, fluid flow as well as between uh, conv convective heat transfer uh, cases where both Reynolds and Prandtl number are going to be important and uh, where the Prandtl number uh, is going to be of the order of 1 which would tell us that uh, the, the, the process is as fast as in momentum transfer, but a different situation would arise when we are dealing with liquid metals. The liquid metals are behave will behave completely differently in the case uh, when we talk about uh, the growth of these layers. For the case of liquid metals, let us see if we if we see uh, the for the liquid metals 
the value of Randall number is going to be very very small compared to 1. Okay. So, this would tell us that the thickness of the hydrodynamic boundary layer is going to be quite small compared to the thermal boundary layer. Now, if you see that uh, Prandtl number is momentum diffusivity divided by uh, thermal diffusivity. So, if the value of Prandtl number is quite small, then <coughs> it only tells us the value of thermal diffusivity is quite large. Now, if the value of thermal diffusivity is large, then it simply tells us that the effect of the temperature of the plate, solid plate, which is in contact with a liquid, since T s is different from the T w, then the effect of the plate, hot plate will be felt at a much greater depth compared to the effect of the plate when we talk about velocity. So, it will take this much of distance for the temperature to become equal to T infinity, whereas only this much of distance, this much of boundary layer thickness is necessary for the velocity over here to become equal to V infinity. So, we have a liquid which is approaching a solid plate whose temperature is different from that of T infinity and due to no slip condition the velocity at this point would be equal to 0. So, there is going to be simultaneous development of hydrodynamic boundary layer and thermal boundary layer. For the case of liquid metal we can say that the delta T that is the thickness of the thermal boundary layer is going to be much much greater than the thickness of the hydrodynamic boundary layer. So, this uh, liquid metals therefore, behave in a different way, but if these two are of the order of 1 momentum diffusivity by thermal diffusivity, then what we would see is that both the hydrodynamic boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer will probably be of the same thickness. That means, the boundary layer thickness is at any fix at any actual position for these two cases would be of the would be almost equal if the value of Prandtl number is of the order of 1. So, the the Prandtl number, Schmidt number or similar such numbers uh, they carry uh, um, information about the basic physics of the process and uh, not only really they allow us to compare between seemingly different transport processes their values will, will, will also give us such important information. Um, so, this is a case of uh, coupled moment, momentum transfer and heat transfer. The processes are there are also processes which are coupled heat and uh, species transfer. Now, they are expressed in terms of Lewis number which is nothing but the, the ratio of Schmidt number and Prandtl number or alpha the thermal diffusivity divided by d the species diffusivity. So, obviously, we can say that if the value of Lewis number is large then the diffusion the species diffusion is going to be slower compared to heat transfer. On the other hand if Lewis number is small then the diffusion species transport is going to predominate over heat transport which would give rise to uh, which would give rise to some interesting phenomena which can be explained by high or low values of Lewis number. A high Lewis number allows droplet generation from vapor cooling where, whereas for low Lewis number the vapor will directly condense on the wall. So, the vapor will diffuse very fast because if the value of Lewis number is small, Lewis number is nothing but alpha by d. So, if the value of Lewis number is small, then it simply tells us that d is going to be quite large compared to the thermal diffusivity. So, if I have a surface which is cold and if I have a vapor 
which is in contact with the cold surface, then due to its high diffusion coefficient, the vapor molecules will reach the cold surface before it feels the change in temperature. So, the vapor molecules will directly come in contact with the cold surface and condense and form, uh, and form a film on the wall. On the other hand, if D is quite small compared to the thermal diffusivity, then the effect of the cold wall temperature wise will be felt at a greater distance. So, the vapor which was coming towards this, it will sense the lower in temperature, there will, thereby will start condensing and droplets will, gen, will be generated from the vapor and these droplets will then come and condense on the cold surface. So, simply by looking at the values of Lewis number from a, by tuning the value of Lewis number, one can make the vapor come and condense on the cold surface or one can one if the value of Lewis number is, is, is large, then the droplets are going to form. So, all are connected with the relative values of the two diffusion coefficients, the species diffusion coefficient and the thermal diffusion and the thermal diffusion parameter. Now, uh, there are several models by which uh, one can uh, one can predict what would be the species transport and there are uh, this is just a case of a two film model and the two film model uh, can be expressed as like a, as I as I mentioned before, then uh, if I let us say I am plotting the velocity profile and uh, velocity profile as so this so what you would see is that the velocity will sharply change and it is going to become more or less uh, more or less parallel. Uh, so, this is the distance from the wall and these are the velocities. So, you can see that there would be some arbitrary distance uh, beyond which the velocity almost becomes invariant. Similarly, for the case of thermal temperature profile or species profile. So, this could be either the T as a function of y or it could be concentration of one species as a function of y, whereas this is velocity in the x direction main flow direction as a condition of y. So, there would be some portion, some point, some plane beyond which the temperature or the concentration does not vary. So, this is known as the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness and this could be the concentration boundary layer thickness or the thermal boundary layer thickness and the relative magnitudes of delta H or delta T can be expressed in terms of the similarity parameters that we know. So, when we if we, if we simply think of uh, when we when we talk about the species transport equations and two film models, let us say this is the interface which separates between which separates these two liquids. So, for fluid A and over here I have fluid B and let us say I am talking about the temperature profile which is uniform in fluid A, but in a layer very close to the surface the temperature falls and over here the temperature again decreases to be ultimately it is going to become a constant. So, these are this could be the bulk temperature or bulk concentration of B and that of A, but over in this region in near these two interface there would be two films on other side on either side of the interface where the change in temperature or change in concentration takes place. So, one can therefore express as we see over here that uh, the flux or the amount of transport for of species 1 is going to be can be expressed as proportional to the distance of concentration of A in the ith fluid at the bulk minus at the interface and uh, similarly from the interface to the bth fluid. So, this way one can find out um, using a two film model the distribution of A or the transport of 
a across these two these across these interfaces. Now, when we have uh, there are simple there are many equations the many relations which have been which have been postulated derived from this uh, two film model for absorption of gas into a liquid we all know that Henry's the we, uh, Henry's law can be used and for evaporation or condensation of a binary mixture for example, in distillation the Raoult's law that is also quite common and these molecular velocities and ma macroscopic fluid properties <coughs> can be obtained theoretically. For example, the properties can be obtained from kinetic theory and uh, I would uh, request you to look at uh, the textbook the famous textbook of transport phenomena by Bird, Stewart and Lightfoot which would give us which, which will tell us about uh, the values the possible values of the viscosity uh, thermal conductivity based on molecular contributions uh, based on kinetic theory of gases and there are certain relations which are available uh, uh, for viscosity of gases the variation of viscosity of gases with temperature from the corresponding equation as you can see that uh, mu increases with increase in temperature and the dependence is root over t whereas in liquids you can see that, uh, that we know that the viscosity uh, decreases with increase in temperature with increase in temperature and uh, similarly one can find uh, relations uh, based on kinetic theory from one of many of these textbooks for thermal conductivity and so on. But one important thing that we must uh, keep in mind is that so far we are talking about and when we talk about uh, Newton's law of viscosity or uh, let us say Fourier's law of conduction or similar such laws that we expect a linear relationship between the force and the corresponding flux. So, when we are talking about the heat transfer um, it is the amount of heat transfer is proportional to the gradient or the amount of shear stress is going to be proportional to the velocity gradient and this linear linear relation gives us the the values of viscosity the values of thermal conductivity or of diffusivity so till now we have assumed that there is a linear relationship between the the cause and the effect the temperature gradient and the amount of heat transfer and the proportionality of this linear relation is the thermal conductivity but these linear relationship will not be valid as the system dimensions are becoming smaller or if the temperature gradients for example, are too large. So, when you have a large value of gradient or the system dimensions becoming smaller then the linear relationship will not be valid and additional terms are to be added to those relations to make the to make the equation more real more equations more realistic and to increase the applicability region of applicability of these equations. So, um, in as I as I was saying the when we talk about small structures the linear coefficients uh, are going to be limited as the surfaces are going to play an increasingly important part for example, in gases in liquid uh, there is an interesting phenomenon which is known as the viscoelastic effects. So, the viscosity or the uh, truly speaking the liquid molecules behave differently in the vicinity of a surface which is which is termed as the viscoelastic effects. Now, when we talk about flow of a let us say a liquid in contact with a dielectric material then the dielectric material due to its electrical charge will will create an adsorbed layer of molecules from the liquid. So, that adsorbed layer of molecule will not move and it is known as the Kelvin Helmholtz electrokinetic double layer or EDL in short. So, the presence of EDL presence of an immobile layer of liquid very close to a dielectric material creates a situation which is different from the bulk flow that we have been discussed so far. So, obviously, this very thin layer of 
thickness few molecules become re becomes relevant in describing the process if the system dimensions are smaller. So, few molecules adsorbed to the uh, dielectric surface will not be will not have any significant effect if we are talking about a conduit which is few centimeters in size. But when we reduce the size to 100 nanometer or even smaller of the conduit of the tube or the capillary, then a few molecular thick layer ad adsorbed on the surface due to the electric due to and the formation of the electric la double layer is can cause significant changes to the flow properties. Not only the EDL, there would be additional changes because this layer, this EDL extends approximately 3 molecular layers from the wall into the bulk fluid and induces a charge orientation in the adjacent fluid. So, this layer of liquid which is mobile but charged is called the stern layer. So, since they are mobile, they are charged yet mobile the movement or the velocity of these molecules would be different when compared to the situation in which the walls do not have any charge. So, this relatively if we talk about very small channels and large molecules then a few molecule thick layer of adsorbed adsorbed layer on the surface and the presence of a stern layer. So, that is why it is called double layer the presence of an immobile layer and the presence of the stern layer their combined thickness could be significant compared to a 100 nanometer nanometer diameter channel. Now, what would this give rise to? This is going to create a situation in which as if a more viscous liquid but uncharged more viscous uncharged liquid is flowing through that 100 nanometer tube. So, these two situations are, are comparable a dielectric a dielectric with surface charges inducing inducing an incre an apparent increase in viscosity that is known as the viscoelastic effect. So, as if the viscosity of the liquid certainly near the wall has increased and this has give, given rise to less flow for the same value of delta p. So, there is a difference between the flow based on depending on whether the tube is charged or it is neutral. So, the presence of charge induces some induces uh, an ordering or in or slows down the fluid close to the surface additional slowing down of the fluid close to the surface thereby it would appear as if the viscosity of the liquid has increased the wall friction has increased you require more delta p than that predicted by the by the ordinary equations which are to be used for bulk flow so this is this is another effect which one has to keep in mind an effect of the transport property how the transport there can be additional changes in the transport property for systems which are very small in size. So, uh, if we, it not only changes the wall friction since the velocity near the uh, near the wall for such cases would be smaller and therefore, the convection is going to be smaller and if the convection is smaller then the value of Nusselt number will turn out to be smaller as well. So, for micropolar flow the Nusselt number could be as uh, could be about 10 percent smaller in laminar flow uh, when, 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 when there is no EDL. So, the EDL influences the flow EDL and heat transfer for flow through micro for flow through very small systems. So, these properties of the transport uh, parameters need to be uh, need to be looked into while thinking about flow through small systems.
Now, when we talk about uh, modeling, I, we are going to talk about now in about modeling, the calculation methods and uh, simulation. So, one can find out first what are the physical variables and try to do some dimensional analysis. Is there any similarity, similarity law that can be used whether or not if there are any scaling laws. Uh, one can start with an order of magnitude analysis. Uh, would, we would also like to see if a lumped element modeling that means assuming that let us say for example, the temperature is space wise isothermal inside a solid which is in contact with the liquid. So, if we could say that the temperature is not a function of x y z uh, inside a solid then uh, that simplifies our calculation to a great extent and that is what is the lumped element or lumped capacitance modeling. There will be some situations in which uh, these kind of uh, approximations would be uh, could not be made and then we will probably have to go for full scale numerical simulation and or analytical modeling. So, we are uh, if we if we think about uh, once a single phase flow then the relevant equations uh, are obviously continuity equation and uh, equation of motion and so on. So, the continuity equation obviously we know that the uh, substantial derivative substantial derivative that is capital D d t substantial derivative of density is going to be a function of the del del t of rho and the divergence of the mass divergence of the mass flow vector. Similarly, for the case of equation of, and if it is a steady state then we will simply know that uh, map the dot product of velocity times area would be the same which would give rise to rho 1 v, rho 1 v 1 a 1 should be equal to rho 2 v 2 a 2 and so on. For the case of equation of motion what we have on the left hand side is the transient effect which is del del t of m w and on the right hand side it is basically a sum of uh, several factors. The first two are the uh, the amount of momentum the net addition of momentum to the con to the control volume as a result of convection as well as conduction. So, the first two terms represent the addition of momentum to the control volume. The next two that which do that contain the pressure they are the effect of surface forces in this case identified as the pressure. The next term is the body force m g and the last term is the additional forces which are acting or which are present in such in, in systems. So, using the correlations between the pressure and the shear stress these are fundamental fluid mechanics then and using Newton's law uh, one can write the uh, write the um, equation of motion in this in, in the following compact vector form. So, for one dimensional if we if we take just an one dimensional differential channel element uh, with viscous flow the momentum balance is uh, simply a balance between uh, a balance between momentum in the change in pressure in the flow direction uh, the change in area in the flow direction and the effect of pressure. So, the pressure uh, between two points can be different and uh, not only that the area at the two points could be different. So, if we have a curved area and then then we would also have to co consider the component of pressure which is acting on the additional area additional curved area. And then the next term corresponds to the shear stress. So, the shear stress opposing the flow and the th last term would be the gravity forces. So, for flow through a channel element this kind of approach can be used to find out what is the what is going to be the total amount of uh, what is going to be the velocity distribution and so on. So, with uh, in incorporating the continuity equation this uh, equation can be simplified and the compa compact expression for uh, momentum transfer as we all know can be obtained. Okay. The second term on the left hand side is called the inertial term and it describes convection and uh, the second term on the right hand side uh, it denotes the viscous forces. The first term on the right hand side is the pressure forces 
and uh, the second the second term on the left hand side or the inertial term is the only nonlinear term in navier stokes equation and under certain special conditions this inertial term can be neglected and we get a, a, a simpler solution of the navier stokes equation so there would be some situations for example when the flow is very slow so the convection will not have any bearing any effect on momentum transfer so one can make a creeping flow assumption and get rid of all the convective terms on the left hand side and there there therefore uh, it would then probably be possible to obtain an analytic solution for such such situations so a creeping there would be several such approximations which can be made to simplify navier stokes equation on the other hand when we talk about the uh, energy equation for fluid dynamics then we have to think about the mechanical energy equation and the thermal energy equation so combining these two one get the total energy conservation uh, which is nothing but the sum of mechanical and thermal energy equations and uh, the last term phi on the right hand side is nothing but the dissipation which is similar to uh, fluid friction uh, similar to friction in solids so it can also be termed as the the amount of dissipation that would result because of fluid friction and this fluid friction increases entropy so in some cases phi in some books textbooks phi is also referred to as the entropy generation okay so the larger the value of phi it's going the larger would be the pressure drop uh, the larger would be the temperature temperature rise the larger would be the frictional force opposing the flow in such systems so this entropy generation has to be kept to a minimum and uh, in order to build an efficient system now as you can see when when we have a micro channel and we have several bends in the micro channel there will be more dissipation and the, the more and more entropy will be generated so a design of a micro channel will also require a knowledge about how we can reduce this entropy generation how we can keep this entropy generation to a minimum and the boundary conditions that one one use these are for no slip condition no temperature jump at the wall and uh, so on and if we if we if you are dealing with this is already uh, must be well known to you that if we have a situation in which there is no viscosity in okay, case a non viscous flow then uh, navier stokes equation can be simplified uh, as the uh, simplified by dropping the terms containing viscosity and it's known as the euler equation but in micro channel flow we may have additional forces uh, and uh, this will have to be taken into account so we are going to uh, give i am going to give you a very quick example of uh, uh, modeling for flow in long and small micro channels so we have a slender micro channel with a rectangular cross section and length in flow direction is much larger than the cross sectional dimensions so uh, roughly the the system would look like uh, this that i have a micro channel which is uh, uh shape this would be the velocity profile and uh, this is flow in and i have flow out from here and uh, this is the flow direction and this is the uh, this is the diameter hydraulic diameter of the channel and this is the length of the micro channel now when we say slender micro channel we are going to assume that dh is much much smaller than l so this is uh, the system that we are going to model the in using the equations that we already know so obviously the continuity equation would be del v star in non dimensional form del y star plus del w star by del z star would be equal to 0 so that's the continuity equation in uh, in dimensionless form and the navier stokes equation would be
the pressure gradient plus the viscosity this is Reynolds number and uh, the z momentum equation. So, one can write the uh, thermal energy equation for this case as well if the temperatures are different. The T refers to the T star refers to the dimensionless temperature. This is the Prandtl number, thermal conductivity. Prandtl number and Reynolds number squared. This E c refers to Eckert number and this is the dissipation function. So, these are the three equations which uh, one has to one has to find one has to use and this Eckert number is simply the flow rate square divided by C p delta t. Now, in flow regimes where you have large Reynolds number this term can then be neglected. Now, so in most of the macro flow problems the values of Reynolds number are quite large and therefore, this entire term can be neglected, but in micro flows the Reynolds number is generally of the order of 1 to 10. So, since in micro flows the Reynolds number are small then this term cannot be neglected and that, uh, that creates additional problems that creates additional problems for solution of this thing. So, the full Navier st Stokes equation must be con must be must be taken into consideration and the the effects of the velocities the u both u and v are uh, are is, is not going to be negligible. Similarly, since uh, the while while dealing with the viscous dissipation the Reynolds, since the Reynolds number is small the effect of this term can not be neglected. So, one would expect that since the velocity is small since the so the viscous dissipation which is similar to liquid friction would also be small. Okay. So, we should be able to neglect viscous dissipation for most of the cases of flow in micro channels, but that is not going to be the case because of the presence of Reynolds number square in the denominator. So, a small value of Reynolds number would lead to a large value of viscous dissipation even though the velocity is small. So, therefore, the important message is that viscous dissipation is important in micro channel flows is extremely important in micro channel flows even though the velocity is going to be very small. Okay. And, uh, the, the, this equation, these three equations have been solved uh, for, for different situations for a different situation uh, and the solution which is there, there in, in some of the text the solution is uh, given over here the last solution uh, as, a, as a Fourier series and when you, one can look at uh, this solution which is for stress function of a bar under torsion and this would give the this would give the uh, solution this would give the velocity uh, for laminar flow with a typical Reynolds uh, with, a, with a small value of Reynolds number. Now, we all know that uh, as Reynolds number increase. So, this is just an example of how complex the situation could be in the case of uh, micro scale processes since we have to solve uh, the full form of the energy equation and the full form of uh, full form of the Navier Stokes equation. Now, there are critical Reynolds number for internal flows which uh, are available in most of the text is that uh, for a circular pipe flow when the Reynolds number is of the order of 2300 we get a 
a change in flow regime. So for plain quiet flow, the Reynolds number could be as small as 1800 when we get uh, this, into, uh, this change in phase and in all cases the length scales are defined. For example, for the case of pipe flow, the length scale is a diameter. For the case of rectangular, it could be the hydraulic diameter. For plain channel flow, the length scale of relevance is uh, the distance from the wall and so on. So, the governing equations can be simplified for long channel geometries and uh, using continuity equation, Bernoulli's equation and so on and one would be able to obtain uh, the total energy balance, the technical incorporating the technical work that we all know that uh, uh, technical work is going to be positive for the case of uh, if work is done on the system for example in pumps and all and if it is negative if it is produced work if the if it is done by the system for example in turbines and so on. So, uh, the viscous dissipation is incorporated in Bernoulli's equation as an additional term as an head loss and uh, for the system of our interest. Uh, this equation has been provided uh, in a book by transport of tra by, in, titled Transport Phenomena in Microprocess Engineering by Cockman and uh, he has given that the pressure drop for, uh, micro, for, for a micro channel with a large number of fittings, bends, valves and straight pipes, it is going to be a factor, two factors. One is due to the straight pipe and the other is due to the curved nature of the pipe and the channel friction, friction, straight friction factor can be easily evaluated using Moody diagram whereas the pressure loss coefficient has to be evaluated experimentally and uh, we all know that uh, how to obtain the channel friction factor and uh, the other factors are the values of these friction factors are uh, given in that textbook the values of CF for these systems. For example, the value of CF as given for uh, mm, KOH trapezoid silicon. So, if, if you make a micro channel like this, then what would be the value of CF? Uh, this value of CF is given to be about 56, whereas we know that for a circle, the value of CF is about 64. So, with the knowledge of CF as given in the textbook, uh, one would be able to obtain what is the total pressure drop as per the equation for flow in a micro channel. So, that is all I wanted to cover today and uh, so this gives us a concise uh, approach, concise description of the complexities associated with flow, heat transfer and mass transfer in micro channels and we are going to continue with that in our subsequent classes. Thank you.